Hi golfers, Nick here from Nick Taylor Golf. It's Friday, so welcome to another lesson on golf tips. This week on Golf Tips, we're gonna take a look at my golf swing, the stack and tilt golf swing from the top view to help you golfers stay on the grid. This video is gonna help you golfers out there, just give you a little bit more understanding of the movements of the stack and tilt golf swing from a different perspective. It's so important that you get an understanding of some key movements that, which are hard to see from sort of the front view and the side view. Last week we took a look at the stack and tilt golf swing from the rear view camera. So in today's video, we're gonna look at some key checkpoints from the top view to help you golfers stay on the grid. Before we take a look at the over the top view of the grid here, so I wanna to explain to you golfers out there that golf is played on an angle. So this golf club is angled to the ground. And as I set up to it, I bend forward. So I'm playing golf on an angle. If we were to play golf like standing upright with the club upright, the swing plane would look very different. It would look like a straight line. But this pool noodle here is angled roughly at the same angle as the shaft. And that's the angle we designed to swing the golf club on. So as you can see, as I go back and down, you can see this club is pretty much on the same angle as this pool noodle. And that's the idea of the golf swing. They're trying to swing on an angle. So this is why the grid is angled like it is. We have a line here to represent the path of the club and a line here to represent a path of the hand. So that just gives you guys a little bit of an idea of the angle of the golf swing and the fact that we bend forward and we play with a club that's on an angle. We are meant to swing the golf club on an angle. That's to keep it on plane in the golf swing. So the standard shot for a stack and tilt golf swing is a little push draw, as you can see there. Pretty good contact and a tight little draw. So let's now take a look at the grid from a sort of over the top view from the golfer's perspective, just to give you guys a little bit more insight into what these lines represent in the golf swing. Now we can take a look at a unique view here of my golf swing from the above view. So we're gonna take a look at these lines, the grid lines where the club is and the hands are. And we can take a look at the, some body movements and some key positions that you need to look for in the golf swing. So a setup here, you can see from the top view here, I've got my feet turned out, the handle slightly forward. Uh, you can see the ball position here just behind my left shoulder on the grid. So a good checkpoint for this would be to be around three balls behind the left shoulder as we set up. So that's quite a good checkpoint for the ball position. Uh, these lines here are angled roughly at 20 degrees. So if you're setting this up at home, roughly 20 degrees, doesn't have to be perfect. It's really just to give you guys a little bit of a visual for the golf swing. In the backswing, what you'll start to notice is my left knee will start to flex forward as my left shoulder moves down, this gives me the ascent to the hands. So by the time I get to shaft parallel, which is position two, you'll see that there's a slight bend in my right wrist. Uh, there's a slight gap here between my hands and my body. My knee flex is starting to change, my left shoulder is starting to move downwards. As I continue to move into the backswing here, my left arm starts to move across my chest. So the arm is not moving out in a straight line, it's moving around my body. This right wrist here will start to bend a little bit more. And by the time I get to the top of the swing, my right wrist here has continued to bend backwards to the top of the backswing. So you can see here from the top view how that right wrist has continued to, to bend. My knee flex has continued to change. My left knee actually moves a little bit inwards here as I turn. So I think some people might misinterpret that as me shifting my weight, it's certainly not. If you look at my right leg here, it turns inside of where it started. It doesn't move to the right or away from the target. So even though this knee does move in slightly as we get to the top, you'll see that by the time we get into the downswing, this left knee would be now forward of where it was at setup. And that's really important, that's me pushing my hips forward as I go through. We talked a lot last week about the hip movement, but today just gives you another unique angle on the golf swing. So on the way down, by the time I get to left arm parallel, you'll see this left arm is inwards. It's kind of on these grid lines. As I mentioned earlier, we have the 
hand path on the inside line here and the club path on the outside line. We're trying to keep the hands and the club on the grid the whole way through the golf swing. So the check point for left arm parallel and the downswing would be that the left arm is inwards. So if you take a look from this angle, you see how my left arm is inwards of my stance line. So I'm keeping it on these lines on the grid. By the time I get down to position six, now my right wrist is more bent backwards than it was in the backswing. If you remember in the takeaway, so we went to position two, there was a slight bend that continued to bend. Then my right wrist was continuing to bend even more as we start down. So the, the bend in my right wrist has continued to bend more. My hands are now more forward towards the target than they were in the backswing. They appeared on a wider circle. Now they're coming on a, a closer to my body as opposed to away from my body, they're starting to come in closer. That's a combination of reasons. So the reason why the hand path is wider in the backswing, partly to do with the, the bend in the wrist, but also to do with the body position. So as I'm coming down, I'm starting to move my body weight, starting to tilt my shoulders. So by the time I come into impact here, I'll have a tilt to my shoulders and my hips. The handle would be forward. And as I've reached the low point, my club is still moving out to the right and slightly downwards. So from the top view here, you'll be able to see the path of the club head and the hands tracing these lines. Backswing, downswing. So at the point of contact, my club is traveling out to the right, but as soon as my club reaches my left shoulder, this is like the tangent point, the most outward point of the goal swing, then the club will start moving back to the left. So let's hit a shot here. So the next sort of checkpoints we look for would be what happens in the follow through. So in the backswing we saw how the, the left arm being across the chest in the backswing and into the downswing. Now as we go into the follow through here, the right arm will be across the chest. So some key things to look for in the follow through. So from the top of the backswing we saw how the right wrist was bending more as we started down kind of maximize its bend roughly at position six. My knee was moving forward, my weight's pushing forward to my left. The handle's forward as we get into impact. Now the club will start to trace the grid on the follow through. So the club here will move round to the left. My body will start to extend and the right wrist will now start to flatten to some degree. And then my right arm moves across my chest as my hands and my club follow these lines as we go through. So that's me staying on the grid as we go through. And then you'll see how I push forward towards the target. So my body weight moves more towards the target in the finish. And my hand path here moves behind my left shoulder. And you can see how I'm, I've turned as well. So that gives you some good key checkpoints there for the goal swing to try and stay on the grid. I think it's quite good to see the goal swing from these different viewpoints to give you guys some different checkpoints and different angles to look at the goal swing. I think that's so important when you're working in your own game. So a slightly different viewpoint there of the goal swing. I think sometimes it's quite good to see these different viewpoints. It really gives you guys a little bit more insight into some certain key movements in the goal swing just to help you guys play better golf. If you're new to the channel, and you want to find out a little bit more about Stack and Tilt, check out this playlist here. I'll put together some videos to kind of guide you through to help you if you're kind of new to Stack and Tilt. In the meantime, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, post them in the box below. And I'll see you again next week for another video.